and welcome to our church at home service this morning. My name is Charlotte and I am the children's and families worker at Holy Trinity and it's lovely to be able to welcome you to our service this morning. Later on Caroline will be preaching on the next part of 1 Peter thinking about the theme of with privilege comes responsibility. In a moment, Sean and Dave will lead us in our first song. But before we go into worship, I thought it'd be great to give you an update on how Holiday Club went. A lot of you have been asking me if you've seen me, so thank you so much for your support in that way. Uh, we had a great time. It was, uh, it was virtual. We had YouTube videos. We had a great team of people who helped us put the videos together. So thank you to everyone who was involved with that. I've got a little montage of, of, uh, of the week, some uh, videos of myself and Kirsty uh, being a bit crazy and also uh, some pictures of what the children got up to, some of the challenges and completing some of the crafts that we had put together. So I hope you enjoy watching this video. Morning, morning everyone. It's lovely to be with you again this morning. We're now going to sing In Christ Alone. Do sing along.
Morning everyone. The reading today is 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 10 to 16. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's sermon title is With Privilege Comes Responsibility. I wonder if I were to say to you, can you recall a time when you were shocked? What would you say? If you were to ask me that, I would could tell you of a time in Uganda in 2005 when I was there as part of a small medical team from Holy Trinity. And we were doing some health and sex education with some older teenagers in Kampala. And they were sat at their desks quietly listening to us. And one of our team, a male who's quite tall, was taking notes on a whiteboard as he went along. And as he wrote further down the board, he began to bend down. And eventually, to squeeze notes in on the bottom of the board, he decided to kneel on the floor. Now, at this point, the class descended into complete uproar. The teenagers started to laugh and to laugh. And some of were laughing so much they were clutching their stomachs or tears are rolling down their faces. Some were even rolling off their chairs onto the floor. The whole place was chaos. And we didn't know what was happening. And we said to them, why are you laughing? And they looked at us and they said this, and it stays with me. White men don't kneel. And we had to say to them, they do kneel, everyone kneels. All people are equal and loved and precious before God. There is no hierarchy. And it was a lesson in how we all need to be aware of the messages that our lives give and the legacy that we leave. This is the second sermon in 1 Peter, which was written around AD 60 to 64 to several churches in Asia Minor who were going through localised persecution. And in Asia Minor, all the family and trade and professional Dealings went on in pagan temples rather than marketplaces. And the new Christians who no longer followed pagan gods didn't want to go there. But some of the local people didn't get that because they didn't really follow local gods either. But they would offer worship, tokens of worship, as a sign of civic allegiance. But the new Christians wouldn't do that, and that's what set them apart. And this had resulted in some localised trouble and persecution towards them. Ruth last week spoke on the first verses of chapter 1 and encouraged us to think about the question, when trouble strikes, where do I turn for help? 
to the God who made me or to some other familiar coping mechanism. 1 Peter 1 verses 3 to 12 Praise God for the gifts that God bestows on faithful people. And there are three that are mentioned in those early verses. A living hope, an inheritance that doesn't perish, and the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. And now we come to the verses today which show Christians the responsibility that goes with receiving these gifts. The Holy God requires a holy people. You have been given a living hope, therefore hope. In other words, live out your call. And Peter goes on to list five points on how to do this. The first, prepare your minds for action. Positive action can actually be to pause, not to drift, to think about the present. So often we can dwell on the past or the regrets or the fears for the future or anxieties for tomorrow that actually those dominate today and stop us living to the full. So in some, time, in some ways we can miss the present when we do that. These are challenging days right now. I'm not finding it easy and I know I'm not alone in that. But what opportunities are there for us today? What legacy will we leave from what we do today? Prepare your mind for action, maybe grabbing this present moment. Number two, be self-controlled or to be disciplined. The Greek more literally means to be sober as opposed to drunk. Sometimes that means to take positive steps away from things that would pull us down. Is there anything we can do to make those things less likely to happen? It's hard right now to remain, to maintain those connections with one another. It really is. I'm zoomed out sometimes. And you know, I would never have even understood that phrase last year or even a matter of a few months ago. Other things we need to continue doing to make sure that we keep connected, even though it takes effort, are the things that we need to do to maintain our discipline in our faith. And number three, set your hope fully on the grace that has been given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Dwell on the fact you're loved. You're special, you're valued, you're important. Our security rests on knowing this in troubled times. Easier said than done, I know. Please reach out to others if you're struggling. Number four, be obedient. Do not conform to the evil desires that you once had when you lived in ignorance. We should know better now. That doesn't mean we don't slip up, of course we all do. But we need to be ourselves, honest with ourselves and with God when that happens. And five, be holy in all that you do. Be holy because I am holy, says the Lord. It's a quote from Leviticus 11 verse 42 and Moses has been addressing the children of Israel when they're in the wilderness still in exile as they awaited the return to the promised land. It's not enough just to not be bad, to, to not do the wrong that we once used to do. It is a call to embrace the possibilities of the new. It is a call to be holy in all that we do. What does being holy in all that you do mean? That's a tough one. 
I wrestle with it as I'm sure you do and I don't think it's easy. I don't think it involves being extra extra good. I think it's got something to do with being in touch with something that's bigger than ourselves. The God we follow, the God we encounter, the God we get glimpses of, just glimpses from time to time, is not definable, containable or always explainable. Richard Raw, an American Franciscan monk, says, we cannot attain the presence of God because we are already in the presence of God. What's absent is our awareness of that. So I think holiness involves an awareness that we are part of a much bigger picture. We might see a few pieces of the jigsaw match a few patterns, but the real picture being created is on the other side of the piece. Being holy is being open to something, to being willing to be caught up in something new, something spirit driven, something maybe we don't fully understand. I think holiness involves being honest about holding those questions that at present have no answers, the stuff we wrestle with, and acknowledging our pain, our hurts, our disappointments. But being open to God in the reality of our difficulties. It's not denying our humanity or our struggles because I believe broken hearts and holy moments can still go together. I think holiness has something to do with wonder, releasing our own expectations, preconceptions, boundaries, taking moments to pause, to appreciate the moment, taking moments to hear the still small voice of God. We can brush up against holiness at the beginning of life and at the end of life. It is beyond the limit of what can be easily explained. There are moments when it feels that there's something bigger going on. A significance that transcends the ordinary. It's the essence of who God is and how he chooses to love us and wants to be intimately involved in our lives. Exodus 3 recounts the story of the burning bush that was not consumed and Moses goes over to look at this bush that's on fire and verses 4 and 5 of Exodus 3 say this. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Why was it holy? It was holy because the presence of God was there. A holy God demands a holy people. A God of hope creates a hopeful people. But with that privilege comes a responsibility. When I worked as a doctor, it was a privilege to become involved in the depth of people's lives. To walk beside people through the challenges of all sorts. It's actually what I enjoyed most about my medical career. But with that privilege of sharing those moments came a hefty clinical responsibility 
and a professional duty to always behave in ways expected of me. There was a code of conduct I had to adhere to and ethical guidance that I had to take. Privilege and responsibility went hand in hand and I understood that. But sometimes privilege is more subtle, something we don't even think about. There's a YouTube clip going around at the moment called The Life of Privilege Explained as a Hundred Dollar Race. Maybe you've seen it. A group of American students are lining up at the beginning of a running race where the prize is a hundred dollars. But before the whistle is blown, they are told to take two steps forward if the following statements they can agree with. Their parents were still married. Two steps forward. They grew up with a father figure in the home. Two steps forward. They had private education or a tutor. Two steps forward. If they'd never had to worry about bills, two steps forward. One or wonder where the next meal was coming from. Two steps forward. And so it went on. And then the ones who were already in front were asked to turn around and look at the students who were still standing on the starting line or were only a couple of, couple of steps forward. And it was a graphic picture of privilege. Do Google it if you're interested. It's very moving to watch. Because sometimes we just don't think about what we have been given very often. We all have different life blessings and different life challenges. And I'm aware that some people listening to this will maybe be going through incredibly difficult times right now. And if that's you, please reach out to someone so that you don't journey alone. We are able as a church to be contacted by the church office if you'd like to turn to us. But whatever our circumstances, each and every one of us are valued and deeply loved by God. And with privilege and what we've been given as people of faith, there is a responsibility on us to honour our call. And the question I'd like to pose today to reflect on this, this week, if it would be helpful, is how can I seek a deeper awareness of God's presence with me today? How can I seek a deeper awareness of God's presence with me today? A holy God requires a holy people, a people who pause to seek him in the present, a people who will embrace wonder, who are prepared for action today, who are self-controlled and hopeful and obedient and aware of grace, a people who leave a legacy worthy of their calling. With privilege comes responsibility. Let's pray. Dear God, this day please be in me and around me. Help me to be really present to what is going on, not preoccupied with the past or the future. Help me to be present to the people I have contact with. Help me to be honest about how I am. And in all things, help me to seek your presence and your hope. In Jesus' name, Amen.
to our prayers, praying for the world and its peoples. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our world and the beauty of creation and all the opportunities we have to appreciate it. But we are also aware of the world's complexities so much suffering, injustice and despair. So many people, so many interactions, so many possibilities for error. We pray for all leaders, both here at home and abroad. Fill them with your spirit. May they put their trust in you, that they may lead creation from death to life. We ask this in your name. Amen. We pray this morning for our Diocese of Bath and Wells. Firstly, for our Bishop Peter, unwell at this time. We also pray for his wife Jane and for your healing upon him. We pray too for Bishop Ruth and for all the new staff recently appointed, and for those retiring. Guide them all at this time. We pray for our young people as they enjoy the summer holidays. Keep them close to you over this time, and give them hope for the future, and for a furthering of their educational needs. We also pray for our older and vulnerable people still coping with COVID restrictions and for all those fearing for their jobs and what the future may bring. Give them hope and trust in you. We remember all those on holiday praying for rest and relaxation but also remember those unable to go away and those with uncertainties over altered plans due to localised lockdowns. We pray for any known to us who are unwell, either in body, mind or spirit. Also those recently bereaved. In a short moment of silence, we name them before you, Lord, and ask your loving, healing hand upon them. Finally, we pray for ourselves. Recalling our reading today, just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Help us all, Lord, to seek you and become more holy in all that we do and say. And praying some of the words of St. Richard of Chichester, O merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, 
and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. And now we join in praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Now that brings us to the end of our service today. Thank you so much for joining with us to worship. It wouldn't be church without some notices and I've got a couple for us now. The first is regarding our giving week. You might have already read about this. Uh, we're opening the church on the week beginning the 17th of August. This is for the people who would usually financially give to the church via the envelope system. On Tuesday and Friday of that week between 9.30 and 12pm, you will be able to bring those gift envelopes into the church. Thank you so much to everyone who has been continually giving to the church through this time. If you don't give and you would like to, please do get in, in touch with the church office. And if you would like any more information about Giving Week, please do reread the email or do call the church office and they will be happy to answer any questions that you've got. My second notice is regarding the private prayer. The church is still open on Tuesdays and Fridays, with the garden open on Tuesdays as well, between 9.30 and 12. Due to government guidelines changing, you do now need to wear a face mask when you come into the church. Um, so please do remember that if you're going to come, uh, please do wear a face mask. This is for your safety, but also everybody else's safety. So thank you so much to everyone who also uh, contributed to this video today. Um, we're so thankful that we're able to put these church at home videos together so we can continue to worship as a church family. I hope that you have a lovely week and do join with us next week as we continue our series in 1 Peter. So for now, God bless and goodbye. Thank you.